You were away last class, Matt? Let me give you a copy. Sorry. I should have thought of that. Who's my favorite student? Jaden says, I am. Sorry, Jaden. My favorite student is good old Anne. Here we go. What's the name for the theory of the origin of the universe? Cole, what is the name for the theory of the origin of the universe? A, B, C, or D? Pardon me? You can't read it? Excellent. I can solve that. Cole and Nick. Cole right here. Nick right here. Both of you guys move right now, please. Dead serious. C, the Big Bang. Okay. Bring your stuff. You're sitting here all class. Come on. Which of the following are the correct order of size from smallest to largest? What's the biggest things besides the universe? I guess galaxy. Well, no, actually, we can go galactic clusters. Okay. Uh, galaxy, I think, is the biggest in this list. So I'm going to cross out B and C. Because planet is not the biggest. Planet is the smallest, maybe. I don't know yet. But I know galaxy is the biggest. By the way, if you haven't figured out, Mason, on a multiple choice test to always cross out wrong answers, that's a great habit to get into. What grade are you in? Do you have provincial exams next year? They're multiple choice. I'm telling you, in fact, on the math exam, fully one third of the questions you actually don't need to solve all the way. If you cross out wrong answers after each line of work, often you'll find, oh, I still have two more steps, but there's only one thing that's not crossed out. It's got to be the right answer, and you can save yourself time. Uh, well, you know what? A planet is smaller than a, you know, it's got to be D. By the way, what if I had had comet on here? Comet bigger than a planet or smaller than a planet? Generally, okay? Star. Why is a nebula bigger than a star? A, neb a nebula a nebula is a massive cloud of gases. In fact, often nebulae, plural of nebula, contain stars. There are some nebulas, nebulae, that are birthplaces for stars because all the gases are slowly coalescing. Fusion starts to occur and let there be light. Which of the following led Edwin Hubble to propose that the universe was expanding? Cole, I know you can read from here. A, the galaxies rotated in the same direction. B, the galaxies were moving towards Earth. C, all the galaxies were the same distance from Earth. D, the light from galaxies was shifted to the red part of the spectrum. What's the correct answer here, my friend? D. I agree, D. By the way, I, I'm always being careful. Not every galaxy is red shifted. There are a couple that are moving. There are some that are moving towards us. They're blue shifted. But almost, 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 almost all of them are red shifted. Well, by the way, what do we call that phenomenon where things shift to the red when they're moving away or towards the blue when they're coming towards us? It begins the letter D, the Doppler effect or the Doppler shift. Okay. Nick, what kind of galaxy is the Milky Way? A. Spiral. Nice. You knew I was coming at you. You were ready. Hey, folks, what holds galaxies together? A, B, C, or D? Sierra. Yeah, gravity. In fact, there are four fundamental forces in the universe. If you take physics, I'll teach you more, but they're all lying forces. There's actually only four, but we don't always want to. The rest are all combinations of them. There's the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force. Those are the two that hold atoms together and nucleuses together. There is the electromagnetic force, which is electricity and magnetism, and gravity. That's it. What does it indicate if light from a galaxy is shifted to the red part of the spectrum? Tensei. What does it indicate if light from a galaxy is shifted to the red part of the spectrum? Say B. 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 Means moving away. Okay. You hear it also with cars, except instead of seeing it as color, you see it as pitch. The sound gets lower and then gets higher as it goes away. You, know, you hear that noise. It's kind of cool. Uh, what's a star cluster? A pattern of stars formed when viewed from the Earth? Actually, what do we call the patterns that stars form when we view them from the Earth? It begins the letter C. The Big Dipper is a good example. Yeah. Constellations. I didn't do a big song and dance on that. There is a section in the textbook, Matt, that has you like memorizing a bunch of the constellations. You may notice I'm not fond of, fond of memorizing trivia. I'm fond of memorizing either useful stuff or if it's kind of interesting. So it ain't that. 
a group of galaxies connected to each other, I think that would be a galactic cluster. That makes sense? Yes? Uh, large num you know what? It's the large number of stars grouped together. Uh, in a spherical pattern is one of them. There's globular clusters, but there's also the smaller ones that we talked about as well. What name do we give the dust and gas found throughout space? Do we call the dust and gas galaxies? Eh, Protoplanet? Eh. You know what? I think it's interstellar matter. Now, I'm not wild about number eight. I haven't done that word with you. But I think it's D. Number eight is not going to be a vocabulary word on your test. Mr. Duick, is there going to be a vocabulary section on your test? Why, yes, Cole, there is going to be a vocabulary section on your test. Mr. Duick, would you like give us a list of words? How about today I give you a crossword puzzle that has all of the words that you might see on the test on it? Would that be clever? Say yes, Cole. There you go. Uh, by the way, uh, fusion, 9A. Why do astronomers call black holes black? Hannah, no light can escape their gravity. Also, because in physics, we know how to name stuff. Endoplasmic reticulum, man. <laughs> Have I done my rant about naming things? Yeah. Uh, what are the dark areas of the sun called? I'll tell you what they're not called, endoplasmic reticulum. I'll tell you what they're not called, phyto, whatever. Uh, they're not, all, oh man, all that. I mean, we're going to do biology after this and you're going to, I find it interesting, but the naming, the Latinization of the names, Matt, drives me crazy. Why don't you call it cell transport system, mitochondria? Why don't you call it cell energy system? I mean, the only, I think the only word they got right is nucleus. Because nucleus kind of means the center, okay, a cell should have a nucleus. I go with that. Hey, what do we call the things on, uh, sunspots, yes? Did I tell you that I saw a, a science astronomy telescope last week? Right? And so I, got to see, I actually got to see solar prominences. They're flares when they go straight out and don't come back. A prominence is like a bulge. I got to see, you could see the bulges. And I told you about the eclipse next year. So August 21st next year in Oregon. In fact, we had a physics teachers meeting on Thursday after school. We're doing a road trip next summer as physics teachers to Oregon. We're going to get the full eclipse. Uh, it's going to slowly make its way across the United States. There is a mountain in Oregon where they say if you, it's about 10,000 feet high. If you climb to the top, you should be able to see the shadow slowly coming across the land towards you, the, sun, the, the shadow from the moon. You'll go into total darkness for about 2 minutes, 40 seconds. And then the shadow will leave. And if you look, you should see the shadow slowly going across the land and vanishing over the horizon. The only risky part is that mountain often has cloudy weather. So I don't think we'll do that one. We'll try and go somewhere where the weather is most likely going to be sunny. By the way, good road trip for you guys next year. Mr. Duick, can you make that a field trip? No. Hey, what's the average distance between the sun and the earth? That's an astronomical unit. What's the abbreviation for astronomical unit? A, you, yeah, A U. That was a joke. Abraham got it. Turn the page. Which of the following planets has water on its surface in all three states, as a solid, a liquid, and a gas? Well, I know we do. Um, I know Mercury doesn't. So right now, I would cross out that one and that one. Oh, which means I know that would see I'm using my process of elimination. I told you I do this all the time. Real question is, does Venus, you know what? I told you Venus is really, 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 really hot, hot enough to melt metal. You think there's ice on Venus? It's just us. This is why we're so interested in finding liquid water on other stellar bodies or solar bodies, because everywhere on Earth where there's water, there is microbial life. Which of the following planets has no moons? Which one of these has no moons? Really? Hopefully you all did that. Right? We have a moon. You guys don't know which of these has no Yeah. Venus. Venus has no moons. Why? We don't know. No reason why it couldn't. I'll give you another, another unsolved astronomy question. Why don't moons have moons? We don't know. 
mathematically you can model it and you can easily have a little moon going around our moon going around the earth it's stable it's a stable orbit we don't know which of the following is an inner or terrestrial planet mars what do we call the other planets outer or i think did i give you another name they're also often called gas giants right most of them are uh, where is the asteroid belt found? Hopefully I've given you a way to remember that with our folding activity. It's between Mars and Jupiter. And it's in the right place based on that folding activity. Oh, you know what? A planet would have been there. There just wasn't enough mass there for that planet to form. So it remained an asteroid belt. Maybe in a billion years, it might slowly coalesce into a planet. I don't know. Match the term. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, seven. So one of these I'm not going to use. Um, I think spiral galaxy is E, yes? Long arms from a central core. Elliptical galaxy, you know what? That contains some of the oldest stars. I remember that. An irregular galaxy Probably G, you know what, I'm going to come back to that. A galaxy, you know what, a galaxy, I think, is a collection of stars, gas, and dust held together by gravity. A nebula is a cloud of gas and dust. Celestial bodies, those are objects that orbit a star. Uh... G. I think it's Iegbkegda. E-A-G-B-C-D. Is that right? Okay. I took these right from your test. These next questions. What's the difference between a rotation and a revolution of a planet? How many marks is this worth, Jaden? How many marks is number one worth? Two, how many statements do you think I should have? That's a guess. Yeah, three. You know, I don't care about full sentences. I'm going to go point form. Rotation. Right? What's the difference? Anyone? Uh-oh. What'd you write? Maddie, what'd you write? Okay, good. Planet spins on its ax axis. We have a length, we have a name for how long that ta takes. It begins with the letter D. Oh, don't hit enter. What'd you say for revolution? When a government is overthrown by the people. No, in, in terms of astronomy. Okay, uh, planet moves, I'll even use the word orbits the sun or star. We have a fancy name for how long that takes. Year. Year. Okay. Hey, Jaden, how many marks is number two worth? How many things do you think it's looking for? Three. Very good. What are the three conditions a planet, a celestial body must satisfy to be considered a planet? Clear its orbit from debris. See, by the way, the reason we had to come up with this is we'd never really defined what a planet was until 2004. And as our instruments were getting better, we were finding more and more stuff that if we didn't define it, would be planets. I think at one point they suggested there should be 12 of them. And I showed you that picture of the dwarf planets, and you can see some of them are bigger than Pluto. Second condition, anybody? Or if we were going a, a star, but yeah. Third one. Yeah. In other words, really what that's saying is there has to be enough rock there that it's compressed itself into a nice round shape. It can't be all wonky and irregular. Okay. Hey, which one does Pluto not satisfy? For me, it's number one. 
whatever order you wrote them in. Sorry, Pluto. Okay. I'm actually not going to collect this quiz. Instead, I just want you to hang on to this to study from. But this was good practice, good review. Okay. Got a couple more things to give you. Can you please take a look at the crossword puzzle? So here's the crossword. These are the clues. It's really small. In hindsight, trying to get them all on one page was dumb. I should have just gone big and had you flip your page over. But uh, how many clues are there grand total? Uh, look for the biggest number. Uh, I'm not going to ask you 38 words, but I think there's going to be about 15 or 20 of these in a little matching section on your test. Okay? These are words that you can figure out. If you get stuck, I do have an answer key or I'll put it online. So this is going to be due the day of the test. I'm not going to collect it next class because you might want this to, what's the word I'm looking for, Evan? It begins with letter S and rhymes with Udi. Thank you. You're a little slow on that one there. Are you okay. Uh, by the way, what day is the test? Friday, Friday, Friday. It'll be mayhem, mayhem, mayhem. What's the block order Friday, folks? Is it EFGH or is it FEHG? You know what would be cool is if there was an app for that. We may want to figure that out, those of you that have a habit of coming in late first thing in the morning, because you wouldn't want to be late for the test. I will not give you extra time. Okay? Take a look at the second handout that I gave you, please. The one that's called 11.2, the solar system review. Some of these are not in your notes. This is for you to work through your textbook. Again, Mason, you notice here, I'm not giving you every detail because I think this stuff, you can read your text and figure this out. Did I attach an answer key to this? That's on purpose because this is kind of like a practice test as well with lots of written questions. I will go over the answers to this next class. I have an answer key made up. That means next class, some of you might want to remember to bring this so that when we go over the answers, it's a little bit more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, effective. Okay? Last class, Matt, I also gave out little quizzy thing, and I gave out the chapter 10 homework. Those you can get done as well. If you hand them in today, I'll give them back to you Thursday. If you finish them Thursday, don't hand them in. You can hang on to them to study. You can hand them in, but if you want to study, hang on to them till Friday and just hand them in on Friday. Any questions there? Well, then we have two more things before I turn.